I had heard about cryoblasting, but I had never had any experience with it at all. This is an amazing way to preserve the original finishes of a car and the original components of a car as opposed to, eh, it's dirty, I'll throw it out and get a new one. The benefit of dry ice is we can preserve this car as it is and really just make sure that all of the dirt and contaminants are, are, have been removed. It's remarkable, like the amounts of different materials you can clean up with this process. So this is the dirt that was impregnated in that Pantera suspension. Holy crap. Hey, this is David with Haggerty and Redline Rebuild. So as you can see, Tom dropped the Pantera off to me. And uh, well, I'm working on the engine, got a few things to wrap up before I can put it into the car. Um, but as you notice, it looks a whole lot different than the last time you saw it. Brian and Tom had this thing completely detailed, cleaned up. It is cool. That whole cryogenic stuff is very neat. So follow along, check it out. Hey, if you like what you're watching, do me a favor. Go check out the Haggerty Drivers Club. 24-7 roadside assistance with flatbed towing, subscription to our award-winning magazine, and more. Sign up today. Link's right down here in the description. Hi, this is Tom Cotter, interestingly, coming to you today from Redline Rebuilds. Uh, we're going to go right now to a, a, a place that specializes in cryoblasting, which is dry ice blasting, which will blast away debris and dirt and bring the car back down to its original finishes on the chassis and in, in the engine compartment. And I can't wait to see what it looks like. You've seen that we got the car transported, unloaded from the trailer, negotiated kind of a, a hilly driveway, and into Jared Friend's shop. Jared, thanks for taking on this project. Tom, thanks. Social media has uh, its downside, but it has its upsides too. When I was looking to somehow clean up the interior of Brian's Pantera, this, this engine compartment, the chassis, the suspension, I had heard about cryoblasting, but I had never had any experience with it at all. And so I put a, a Facebook post out, does anybody know of any cryoblasters in the Charlotte area? And several of my friends said, yeah, you know, there's this guy named Jared Friends and he's, uh, his contact. So I, I contacted Jared and, and you know, this is, this is the guy. Uh, Jared is a, uh, has, a, has another career in the healthcare industry, but this is a, a new career for him and Jared and, and Kyle over there. Um, do cryoblasting. So if you could just tell us what cryoblasting is, give, give, give my audience kind of the executive level a definition of cryoblasting. Sure, so the technology has been around for probably 25 years um, in various verticals, um, large manufacturing, um, food service. So any surface that can be cleaned um, where you want to um, not damage the substrate underneath the dirty areas. Um, so for instance, if you're in the food industry, s and Coffee, a local coffee manufacturer, they wanna clean all of their machines free of all the grounds we can use dry ice blasting or dry ice cleaning, um, same key phrase, to be able to remove the um, layer of grime or buildup on a surface without damaging anything underneath. So the benefit of dry ice is we can preserve this car um, as it is. And one of the um, areas that we always go back to is communicating with the, with the client, how far do you wanna go? So in this case, um, Tom, you wanted to clean this car, but be able to leave this undercoating and really just make sure that all of the dirt and contaminants are, are, have been removed. And so that's, that's our goal here today. Um, hopefully we'll uh, be able to put on a solid display of what dry ice is capable of, um, our equipment, um, and uh, we'll show you guys some techniques and uh, we'll uh, hopefully 
have this thing looking as close to factory spec as possible in a couple of hours. So Tom, if you want to take a look at this, this is what we were explaining earlier that our equipment is extremely scalable and it allows us uh, the opportunity to turn the system way up, including air pressure as well as particle size. So if we're doing a very, very um, abrasive surface that we want to be very abrasive, we can turn that way up. Um, and then it all dictates as well of what type of gun. And then we have numerous tips that you use as well. This is pretty cool when you open it. Now what is, what is this for? Depending on how much ice you go through, it's up to you know, $2 a pound. Mm -hmm. This is 500 pounds in here. That's $1,000. Yeah. Okay. You know, you can actually touch it. It's just dry ice. So, I mean, it's, oh wow, it's hot. It's yeah, hot. once you, yeah, <laughs> if you let it sit in your hand Whoa. for a while, but you can handle the material. You bring that camera over, it almost has a, a tube, tubular shape to it. If you look, it's, it's almost like a, a, a little piece of plastic, round plastic. Yeah, so we'll just scoop it up and we never, you know, the good thing is, say this is soda blasting or media blasting, if you were to scoop it up and you were to dump a little bit on a fresh epoxied floor, you'd be pretty upset because now you have to clean it up, that's gonna evaporate. Kyle's been blasting away here for about an hour and, and we asked if he could do one side and we'll leave the other side so we can do a side-by-side -side comparison. So if you look at this, here's the original uh, undercoating clean and over here it's dirty, all right? So it's been blasted off. If you look at the wires, the grommets, here's the unit joint, the emergency brake cable, brake line, these braided hoses. Here they're not touched, and here they're already cleaned up. I mean, I don't know if we're gonna be using these again because they're pretty brittle, but I think we just wanna show as an example of what this machine, how versatile it is. Um, so this, this, these surfaces were put together exactly 50 years ago. So there's a half a century of road grime on here that we're cleaning away. If you look at the cross members here, they had, uh, undercoating on them, well now that undercoating is clean. So you can imagine the car looked very similar to this when it came off the assembly line in Italy a half a century ago. So there's the dirty side over there. We're gonna hit that next, of course, but this is uh, an amazing way to preserve the original finishes of a car and the original components of a car as opposed to, eh, that's dirty, I'll throw it out and get a new one. So I'm, I'm so pleased with this and you know, soon, We'll have the uh, transmission and the engine back to put it back in here. It'll be a, not, a, a lot cleaner environment to, to work on that putting those new components in here when this is all the grease is gone and the grime is gone. I'm, I'm totally thrilled. The car's been blasted now. We figure a total of five blasting hours. And then there was, you know, 
prep time and explanations and camera time and whatever. And Kyle's been doing all this work, first from the top down in the engine compartment, and now from the bottom up. So tell, tell me what you did here and what you aim to do with that blaster. So when I come in here, you know, I focus on removing the dirt and also all the grease. If you remember, this was just solid black with the grease and covered and you couldn't see the, yeah, well, the like ribs. It, and, like it is over here. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, focusing on getting grease and everything out of your suspension parts and nooks and crannies. You can see how well these became exposed again. Uh -huh. uh, getting the dirt out of the strut and everything, make sure and just making sure pivot points and stuff are free of grease and and build up, you know, a lot of dirt can build up behind them sometimes if it doesn't have a big gap. Yep, yep. Um, that and just focusing on, focusing on making the bottom look good. So do you think, like this is the original finish, like when the car was new, that, that this was painted black and, you know, it probably wasn't high quality, but this is down to the original yeah, finish. Yeah, this is that down was, to the original finish. And, and, you'll, and you'll notice that there's some browning in it, which a lot of this might be a little bit of dust from yep. blasting, but some, you know, especially on older vehicles, the dirt and the road grime just gets so impregnated into the, the coating or the paint. To get it any cleaner, you would have to remove it, you know, remove the, the paint. So I it's get just, it. And so is that why you have this kind of shading going on here? Yeah. So it's just the inconsistencies here is just from stains. And you can see it almost looks like a little bit of bare metal in here. You know, it's... So you don't know how well that undercoating was put on there when it was new, how consistent that was. Exactly. And then this is the wheel throwing up crap from the road, and that probably wore the undercoating away as well. Yes. So, so you know, I guess the 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 uh, the answer is if you want a consistent look throughout the fender, well, respray it. But if you want to work with what the factory put on there in Italy, this is what it looks like. So what we've done is. You've done half the car. Is this as high as the lift goes? It is, yes, sir. So we've done, you've done half the car uh, all the way down the middle. So, you know, if you look, you can compare side to side how this one looks over here. It's kind of grungy, this, this half shaft. You can see where Kyle explained that that, that uh, I guess that it's like a nut, I guess, I suppose. It's all caked with grease, but here it's like a factory would have had it although it's you know it's a 50 plus year old piece of metal so that's as clean as it will come but that's day one down and tomorrow we'll complete the other half of the uh, chassis suspension and then go around and start cleaning up door sills under the hood areas that you would not imagine you would you could pressure clean um, but you can because you can just dial this down now, i'm going to try my hand at it tomorrow my son Brian will be here. He'll try his hand out as well. So uh, it was a good first day. We'll see you tomorrow. Day two at the Cryo Blasters with uh, the 72 Pantera. The car's owner, Brian Cotter. Tom Cotter, how are you? Oh, nice to meet you. Uh, we're gonna work on the left side of the car and, and Kyle and Jared are gonna give us the opportunity to, to do some of the squirting today. So uh, we're gonna squirt some dry ice, starting to clean the right side of the rear suspension. And uh, so hopefully we can do as good a job as, as Kyle did. Literally just pull the trigger, find your groove. <laughs> Alrighty. I just tried my hand at cryoblasting, and uh, you see here, um, it's cleaned up. The rear so the side of the left suspension has been cleaned up. I haven't touched the forward side yet, but you can see how, you know, we crisply the, the nut comes out again. This it was all caked in grease. What I was really interested in was to have a the uh, lug nuts, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the uh, studs coming out of the wheel, the, the, the threads just clean up so nicely. All around the U-joint, 
um, around this half shaft slip joint here, which was caked with grease. Now I take it that some of this stuff has to be blasted again to get it really nice because it seems like the, the subject freezes and I think you probably have to let it calm down a little bit again, thaw out a little bit, and then go back and get it one more time because it seems like the grease holds the cold and doesn't go anywhere. Now Kyle would know better than me, but uh, I'm not ready to apply for his job yet. So it, this sat obviously in a, a barn uh, or like a kind of a warehouse thing as you've seen and there's just so much, uh, I don't know, decades of dust on this thing. And, and now it's, it's remarkably clean. You can still see there's still um, some black marks, but that's, I would say, more to do with the casting process of the transaxle than actually being uh, significantly dirty. But we sprayed it just now with some parts cleaner, uh, some brake clean that should break up some of the remaining grit and then we will try to blast the remainder off. But it looks a lot better. I think it'll be a lot more pleasant to work on now that it's not covered in lots of, uh, of grease. So believe it or not, Brian's still working. And so he had a conference call to get back on. So it's back to the old man now. the way this was when we brought it here yesterday morning to the way it is now, I mean, it's going to be so nice to work on this car. Who knows how much dirt fell down, but you know, if you remember, the hot, the, uh, the, the dry ice hits it, the, the ice evaporates because it's CO2 and the dirt falls to the ground. It, it's an amazing business you've got here and it, it's addicting. I mean, it really is pretty fun to clean, isn't it? It, it is like, oh, like, like, is that like I'd, I'd like to have one at home. To, <laughs> You can come over anytime you'd like. I do my wife's, you know, silverware. Yeah, I don't know. That's right. Uh, and, you know, so Brian and I both got to spend time with this. What's your feelings about it? Yeah, it is uh, oddly satisfying to use the uh, the machine. It's pretty cool. You get something that's dusty and grimy and dirty, and it, it makes it look nearly new. It, it's incredibly fresh. It's Everything looks nice to work on. Hardware cleans up so well. All the rubber lines clean up really well. The wiring harness cleans up really well. It's... It's remarkable, like the amount of different materials you can clean up with this process. Well, I want to thank uh, Jared for uh, inviting us over to, to, to do this little experiment. Uh, it's, it's, it's wonderful, and I'll be your best salesman out there, man. And, sure. and you know, like these people watching, uh, some of those may be calling you up, man, really. Hey, give us a call. We'd love to. We really appreciate you bringing this car over. It's been a pleasure, man. I, I need to drive, though. <laughs> Just one when it's done. <laughs> Sounds like a deal. <laughs>